Um, so today I'm just going to be walking through our new GDT GUI. So this is not really any new functionality that we've added. Uh, we've just tried to improve the user interface. Um, so for NX, Creo, and our MultiCAD users, um, this will hopefully be a, a lot better for you guys. For V5 and 3D Experience, uh, we now allow authoring of uh, GDNT within 3DCS. Um, so that'll be new for you. So previously, you had to create the FTNA in uh, V5 and extract that to use the GDNT. Now, with this new uh, GUI, uh, you will be able to create this on your own. So you don't require FTA, you can create everything within 3DCS. <clears throat> If you're not familiar with our GDNT GUI, uh, it's under here, right by our tolerances. Um, so like everything else, it's gonna ask for a parent part. I'm just gonna be looking at this one part today. And that's gonna open up our GDNT's dialog. Um, so from this dialog, we can start adding all of our different callouts if that's what we want. Um, The GDNTs uh, support either surfaces or coordinate points. Feature points are not supported, uh, and that's just to help to remove the chance of double tolerancing those feature points. So uh, I'm just going to start walking through creating this GDNT. So on this bottom surface, that's our A datum feature. Uh, that also has a flatness, so I'm going to start with that. So on our list here, I'm going to select flatness, add that type. Uh, everything needs a unique name, so that's nothing new. So I'm just going to call this flatness of A. Now we can add the features. I'll click add, select that bottom surface. That's the only feature I want. And then the flatness type is already selected in the pull down here and it has a range of 0 0.2. So that flatness gets added to our list. And I'm actually going to go back a second. And within um, the tree here, as well as the dialog, I'm actually using our alias display for the GDNT. Um, so this is going to make it look like uh, the callout that you would see on the drawing. So. What I've done is I've added uh, just a vertical line, uh, the range, any uh, material modifiers, and then the datum reference uh, type, uh, or datum reference frame, I should say, and then the unique name after that. So as we start adding more, uh, this should be looking more like a GDNT drawing just listed on the side of our tree. So that surface, that's our A datum feature. We also have to declare that as the datum feature. So with datum feature selected, I'll say add, uh, just call it A, select that feature again. And that's all we need to declare that as the datum feature. Can you slow down your mouse movements a little bit? Sometimes it's hard to see where you're clicking. Next, we have the uh, hole here. So that is our datum B. Uh, first, there's a size tolerance on it. So I'm going to select size and say add. I'm just call this the size B. So now I'm going to select that feature. And for our tolerance itself, that is a diametrical feature. So we have our diametrical zone, and the range is plus or minus one, which just happens to be my default, so I don't have to change anything there. Um, so that's all I would need to do to create this frame. The hole also has a perpendicularity on it, so I can say add frame, and that's going to add a new line. I'm going to change that to perpendicularity. It also has a diametrical zone. 
So I'm going to change that. The range, 0 0.2. Type that in. Uh, the default is to have that material modifier, so I don't have to change anything there. And then I have to specify my datum reference frame. So I already created datum A, but in the list, I don't have datum A. What I have to do is go to my datum reference frame tab. This top list, that is our datum reference frames that have already been created. So there's nothing in the list yet because we haven't created any datum reference frames. Down here are the list of all the datums, the datum features that we've already created. So to create that datum reference frame A, all I need to do is select A. You can see it adds it to that primary datum reference frame box. And then that's all I need. So I click Add, and that gets added to my datum reference frame list. So I go back to my tolerance. Now in the dropdown, I can select A. And so that would complete this uh, call out. Um, when I added the frame, because everything has a unique name, it also created a new uh, item up here, GTAL4. I'm just going to change that to be a little bit more descriptive. Um, so what you can see is that I now have two items in my list here, size the B, which is the top frame, and the perpendicularity B, which is the bottom frame. 